Hi, I'm Dr. Angela McBrady of drflute.com. Today's flute tip is on arm placement. So I want to talk about arm placement a little bit, and then I want to do some experimenting with um, the position of the arms and the angle of the flute, and I'll get more clear on that. Uh, but I was reading an article by Patricia George, and who's great, her and Phyllis Avedon Luke. I always say Luke, but I don't know if it's Lauk. But uh, they have many uh, good uh, books for you to use for uh, training and articulations and beginner books. And there's a lot of great stuff. But I was reading this post that she put on Facebook and I thought, you know what? I need to experiment with that a little bit. So uh, I thought I'd do a little bit of experimenting in front of you and see if you hear a difference or you think there is a difference or is there no difference. And let's, let's see, because it made me think and I then had to look in the mirror to go, all right, what, what am I doing? And I'll bring that up in just a minute. So arm placement, we're just talking about here. Um, if you ever played in marching band, you're playing with your flute like this and your arms straight out. That's what you have to do. And I always know when it's marching band season and I have my high schoolers come to me because their arms are stiff and straight. And guess what? You're not getting a fantastic tone that way. That isn't how you're going to get a great tone. And you are eventually going to cause yourself some problems. Now, I bet none of you are playing with your arms as straight out as that because you're probably maybe maybe some of you are in marching band. Even you marching band students are probably uh, practicing in your house are not quite that straight. But uh, even so, I can tell when my students have had marching band because they are playing at a little bit of an awkward angle with their arms. Um, in Patricia George's post, she said, and she was quoting someone else. She's had te various teachers, Michelle DeBost being one of them. Uh, and they said the, uh, whoever she was quoting, so I'm not positive who that was. Uh, the only thing that should hang on your flute are your arms and your jaw. And I think what she's meaning with the jaw is just, you need to have a relaxed embouchure. And, uh, that means your jaw is not stiff like this, it should just be, you know, loose and relaxed. Um, and then the other thing are your arms. So if I bring my flute up to here, where should my arms go? Um, I, I've had students down here. Well, if that, that's not quite hanging, that's, you know, you're, you're putting them sort of at an awkward angle or even just this one or just this one. Uh, you don't want anything awkward when you're talking about your arms. I, I want to put the flute up and we're kind of wherever my arms go, that's where they should go. Now, I have often told my students, don't look like you're on your flute, that you're hanging on a branch. You know, you're, you're pulling yourself up, you're hanging on that branch, holding yourself, you know, so you don't fall off. I don't want to hold on to it like this, right? I'm holding on to the branch, the branch is here. So I'm holding on and, you know, this way because the branch is above you. Um, so I don't want to hang like that. There does need to be an angle, but it's just whatever is relaxed angle here in your elbow. So I don't want to do anything forced, not this and not this. Both of those are weird. This is what comes if I want to hold my flute up and make it feel comfortable. So when you're thinking about this elbow, I, I generally say, you know, you're going to be somewhere in a, if we talk about your elbow to the floor, if your elbow is going from the floor to here, that would be 90 degrees. Uh, that maybe 45 degrees is where you're thinking about having that elbow. It's just here. I don't agree with it being totally hung this way. So I think somewhere right here, but it's what feels natural for you. And we all have different uh, issues with arms or broken bones and that have healed and this is what you could do. It's whatever is comfortable for you there so that you're not feeling like you're, you know, just hanging on to the flute. It's relaxed. Whatever angle gives you relaxed hands, um, gives you relaxed wrist in here and doesn't do anything forced. If my elbow is up too high. I feel that tension here. Uh, if I'm too low, I feel a weird 
angle here that's not going to make my fingers move very quickly. This elbow right here, it just hangs. It goes wherever it should. I'm not going to put it out. It's not going to be forced in. If I bring my flute up, here's it on my side. It's tucked right in here and I just bring it up. <laughs> It's, it's right there. I, I don't want to do anything. So I, that elbow, just hem, let it go. Just don't do anything with it. It's going to be just fine. All right. Now, here's the other point that Patricia George brings up. And it had to do with she was watching, I think, um, Emmanuel Peyoud give a master class. And so she's talking about this. And I'm trying to think, okay, am I interpreting this properly? Um, but they were talking about how the end of the flute should be past your nose, all right? So if you're, again, if you're a marching band, it's straight. It's a straight line from here, here to here. I guess that would be straight, okay? I don't know, does that look straight to you? That, from my nose down? That's what you're trying to do, that's straight, okay? Is that the best place for you to play? Well, that's what I wanna experiment with. Now, for me, when I play, this is where I play. So I think, now if I were to take a picture looking down, I think that I'm out. So this is, if I was playing marching band, straight from my nose down to the end of my flute. Um, and I think that I'm playing with the end of my flute out a little bit. Does that look like that to you? Um, so the, the idea is that gives you more projection and that gives you a bigger sound. Um, it's also better intonation. She says a couple different points brought up and I'm not going to test intonation or anything, but let's, let me, if I play, let me put it back here and do. I think I was moving forward. Let me try to keep it right back there. All right, so I don't know, maybe, I can't tell when I turn my head, but I think that that's in line. I think that's in line. Now, let me move it forward. I'm going to put it where I like to play here. Um, what do you think? Was there a difference in sound? Now from here, tried to blow the same amount. I do think that moving it out made it a little bigger. I did feel it push into my lip a little bit more, but um, still I'm very loose on that embouchure. Here, I probably could be lighter. But I still can be there. What if I went out a little bit more? Could you hear a difference in those three different ways? Now, I'm not sure I did between the really far out and where I like to play, but I definitely felt when it was back that it gave me a much smaller tone. So start looking in the mirror and watch what you're doing. Let me just experiment with that D. Well, 
I think I heard three different sounds there. I think my normal spot might be a little bit smaller sounding, but I'm not sure the tone quality was just as good in that farther pushed out position. But I know that I'm going to start experimenting with that because I read about it from Patricia George and I need to see what there is about that. I haven't really discussed that. Now, with my students, I know when they're marching band straight, that's not what I want from from them and I talk about arms but I rarely talk about position um, and I don't know pushing your right arm out or back or where that should be but I think it's worth exploring because I heard three different sounds uh, just then when I played the D's and I think you could too and perhaps you're not getting the biggest best most in tune sound from the angle you're playing so perhaps you need to change your angle and I'm here to give you the freedom to say just try it because I know sometimes we think that's not something we can do this is where I hold my flute this is what I do and we need someone to say no way you you don't have to you can move your flute out you can bring it back in it can be uh, whatever is the right place that gives you the best tone the biggest tone and the most in tune so experiment with the angle of your flute I've talked about the angle of your airstream experimenting, but this is new. So experiment with that angle and see what gives you the best sound. That's today's flute tip.